Welcome to uh, Sunday morning service. Uh, the first song that we're going to sing is Meekness and Majesty. So please stand. Lately, uh, recently he retired, and then I supposed to join the uh, retreat group with, with him, but uh, I wasn't able to because of um, uh, my father-in-law's funeral over in Korea, and I had a chat, and, and he reminded me of this Psalm 3, Psalm 103, so I like to read from verse 13. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like a grass, he flourishes like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and it is its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children. To those who keep covenant and remember to do his commandments, the Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules forever. Let's pray. Dear Father,
we recognize who you are and this morning that's why we have come before you and worship you and this morning please help us to worship you in truth and in your love Amen And the second song is Amazing Grace. So please stand. <laughs> getting closer each week so just to keep that in mind and year age will be coming um, to our church on the 27th of November. Rob's mentioned in there um, no doubt that there's no Mark St Mark's Anglican Church 
is having a memorial service for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II at 9.30 a.m. on the 22nd of September. So just if you are interested in going to that, uh, be next on the 22nd. Um, Diane Speak Brown. Joe, do you have to let them know? It didn't say anything on, I, I looked on their website and the council website and it didn't mention RSVP. I assume it would be a good idea. Probably a good idea because it's, uh, there's a bit of tea there, so they probably won't no, no numbers for that at least. So, yeah. Um, Diane Brown also would, would like us to be uh, collecting tea bag tags once again. And on behalf of the residents at Tatara Gardens, and they'll be used to help fund wheelchairs. So, anyone, if people will use tea bags, which is probably most of us, um, keep, keep the uh, tags and uh, bring them in to church when you can. Is there anything else that needs to be mentioned? Um, Andrew Burgess is having a what, how old is he now? 24. 24. So, I'll have a short word of prayer for Andrew Burgess. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you and praise you for Andrew. We thank you that, um, that you've been with him and um, he's heard your word. So we pray that it's really working in him. We pray that um, you continue to guide him and direct his ways, help him to be more aware of your presence as well, and to really understand that he needs Jesus as his Lord and Saviour, as we all do. So we just pray that his birthday will be a really uh, enjoyable time for him. Amen. Um, do you want me to do the um, permissions? Or? Oh, I'll just continue now. Um, just just to pray and pray for the missions that um, we support and others. So let's pray for those. Heavenly Father, we do thank you that we're in a position to be able to be uh, not only support some missionaries financially, but also support them in prayer and thoughts. And we do pray for people like the Euros and Isaac, Odiet and others as well, and Robin. We pray that you watch over them and keep them safe and encourage them um, as they continue serving you and sharing the good news with the people <coughs> where they are. Help them Lord also because they are, are away from family and friends in Australia that you uh, just uphold them and, and may they be really uh, aware of your presence in their lives, in your son's name. Um, While you're there, you can do the Bible reading. Oh, yes, okay. <laughs> I'm off, one more. Sorry. First, first Bible reading is, I'll put up there. First Bible reading is from Luke 24, verse 1 to 11. And it starts, Paul and an apostle of Christ Jesus, by command of God our Saviour, and of Christ Jesus our hope, to Timothy, my true child in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. As I urged you when I was going to Macedonia, remain in Ephesus so that you may charge certain people or persons not to teach any different doctrine nor to devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies which promote speculations rather than the stewardship from God that is by faith. The aim of our charge is love that issues from pure heart and good conscience and sincere faith. <clears throat> Certain persons by swerving from these have wandered away into the vain discussion desiring to be teachers of the law without understanding either what they are saying or the things about which they make confident assertions. Now we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully. Understanding this, 
that the law is not laid down for the just, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and sinners, for the unholy and the profane, for those who strike their fathers and mothers, for murderers. The sexually immoral men who practice homosexuality, enslavers, liars, perjurers, and whatever else is contrary to our sound doctrine, in accordance with the gospel of the glory of the blessed God, with which I have been entrusted. Amen. Thanks, John. Let's pray for our offering. Dear Father, we thank you for your gift to us that every day we can live with. Lord, thank you for the houses that we're living in, thank you for the clothes that we're wearing, and thank you for the food that we're having, Lord. And it is your blessing to us, and it is your gift to us. And Lord, this time that we took some portions of your gift for your kingdom, Lord, we pray that we continue to have a heart to give and, and your love to share. Lord, pray that uh, your coming your management in here that we'll be able to use this uh, money wisely. In Jesus' name, Amen. The third song that we're going to sing is from a uh, screen, Tear Out My Soul. Please stand. Be seated, and now it's time for champions. You can come to the front. All right. This morning, that we're going to talk about our faith. Faith. How you operate your faith. You know what? 
human, human, amazing. We have a logic. We have a logic for sense that we know what to do with all that. But when we make decision, we don't use our logic. We use our feeling. Most important decisions, you don't make decision according to the logic, but you make that decision according to your feeling. Is that true? I think so. So um, let's let's see about like how we operate our faith. Okay, this morning. Before we do that, I like to show this one. That's Oscar. We have Oscar for five years. Like last week was the fifth year that I took Oscar actually rescue from rescue him from the uh, small backyard in Sydney. So uh, we had him for five years. Then that's Oscar with the cheeky monkey. Uh, what is that picture? Oscar sleeping. No, 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 no. Oscar had a shower, so you know he's, <laughs> he's in there <laughs> after shower. All right. And uh, what's next? Oscar sitting on the chair. Sitting on the chair. That's a very special chair. That is just behind my office. Then I, uh, when I sit in my office, I don't. I know. I normally not moving between. <coughs> Two and three hours, I sit there. When I look back, Oscar was just sitting and looking at me for two hours. <laughs> That's the picture. Okay. <laughs> All right. <Yeah. laughs> That's a cute, Oscar. <laughs> okay. Oh, what's this? What's this? The troublemaker. Like um, Oscar was barking, so we put him in the house without anybody. When we went home, that's what happened. <laughs> so we can put him in the house. He knows what to do. Right, that's the Oscar, the troublemaker. And uh, what's next? That's, that's the Oscar passport problem. <laughs> <laughs> we, we didn't make one, but I thought, oh, it's good to have a passport photo, so I took it. And this one. This one is very interesting. I think that this is the photo I took one or second day that we have Oscar. So, so you can see Hami is behind Oscar, ready to run away. Okay? And Hami is scared of Oscar. Just can you see that? The bomb, that direction that he, she wanted to just ready to run. And Hassan, with the ball, very comfortable because uh, he knows that Lishi is the, not, not reach, reach to him. So he's comfortable. Ah, I'm peaceful. Okay, because Oscar can't reach me at all. And uh, this photo, you can see Hannah. You know why? Because she's the boy. No, no, no. You know why you're not there? Because you are scared. Very scared to get near Oscar because Oscar's big dog and even didn't come up. Just scared. Yeah, that was scared. Then. After this photo, I hold my hand with Hannah, I took her outside, and she was sitting next to me, I mean, standing next to me, and looking at Oscar, and getting to know him and be friends with that. Then I have a question for you, Hannah. Were you scared with Oscar before? How much? A lot, right? But when I hold my hand with you, were you scared? No. Okay, now we're going to talk him about the faith. So why are you gonna scared when you hold my hand? Is that because I'm your dad? Why are you gonna scared? That's an interesting thing. It's because it's because you can raise your hand, it's because Okay, so why are you want to scare? That's the key of our faith, right? We know that God exists, okay? That's not faith. You can have that kind of faith, God exists, but nothing to do with your faith. For when I hold your hand, you have a faith that I can protect you. That faith 
you can hold my hand and you're not scared with the whole sky anymore. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Okay. It's not about our faith whole in our church family. It's not about, like, we know that God exists. Nothing to do with our faith, right? That is not personal thing. But if we know that, God can protect us, God can lead us, God can guide us. That's a different thing. Because I'm her dad, and if I can't, if she doesn't trust me that I can't protect her from Oscar, she will come out. It's not because I'm her dad, right? She trusts me that I can protect her. That's a different thing. So how about all of us in this room that can you trust God that God can protect you and lead you and guide you? Of course. Of course. And that faith, actually the Hebrews chapter 11, talking about something that very significant thing. That faith, we need that. So who wants to read it? Who wants to read it? Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Okay. <laughs> and and without faith it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Okay. So without faith we can't please him. How can you please him? That you have faith in him that in any circumstances that he can protect you and guide you and feed you. Please remember that. Okay? Alright, let me pray for you as you go to Sunday school. Dear Father, we thank you for our champions. Lord, as they grow, Lord, uh, we pray that they will have a good friends around them, um, good teachers around them, of course, the parents will look after them. But most of all, Lord, they will put their faith in you, that trust you, that you will protect them and guide them and lead them and feed them. Lord, they will all have, always have a personal faith with you and the faith that will uh, please you, Lord. And as they get to Sunday school this morning, they will have a fantastic time of learning and time of fellowship with one another. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let's go to Sunday school. <laughs> okay, now that we come to our uh, main prayer time, um, I'd like to ask you to pray the things what's in your heart. We can ask God that everything that what we um, desire of and the things that we can ask. So um, I'd like to ask you to pray, then in a moment of silence I will pray. So let's bow our head in prayer. Father God, we just thank you for the privilege that we have to come to your
to what they're used to, to doing in China. Um, we just pray for these people and we ask for your, um, in, their, your encouragement and we, we give thanks for their uh, faithfulness to you in the work that they've been doing. In Jesus' name, Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for who you are. And Lord, we thank you that you um, saved us from our sins, Lord. And we, when we look at our lives, Lord, we have a selfish desire for ourselves to please our wills and our life. Instead, focusing on you and love you and love our neighbors as ourselves. Lord, we pray that uh, your grace and mercy that will convict our hearts and always penetrate our heart that, that we repent and uh, we go back to you, your gospel, that we can treat each other like brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, um, pray for those who are going through terrible, terrible, difficult times through the tragic accident in Boston, Lord. It is a difficult time for everybody, Lord, but especially for families, Lord. Just pray that um, your peace and your comfort and your love, please wrap them around your care and they will know who you are and, and they will come to a time that what's all about our life is, Lord. And especially pray for Lily and uh, Gabby, Lord, and their family, Lord. Just pray that you uh, comfort them, give them your peace. And thank you for our church family in here, Lord. That you united us, your love, with your love, with your care. And we thank you that, that we can freely love each other and we can do the things together in your name. What a privilege that we have, that we can call ourselves, this is our church family. Lord, we continue to work on that and continue to um, do the things what we meant to do. And, and we can be the what people what we meant to be in here, Lord. And Lord, we thank you. And thank you for everything, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And the second Bible reading is from 1 Timothy chapter 1, 12 to 20, and Jan is going to read for us. One Timothy one verses twelve to twenty. Christ Jesus came to save sinners. I thank him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithful appointing me to his service. Though formerly I was a blasphemer, persecutor, and insolent opponent. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace
grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But I receive mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who are to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honour and glory forever and ever. Amen. This charge I entrust to you, Timothy, my child, in accordance with the prophecies previously made about you, that by them you may wage the good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience. By rejecting this, some have made shipwreck of their faith, among whom are Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have handed over to Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. Thank you, Jan. Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you for the passage that we read. Lord, please help us to uh, understand this passage that uh, we'll be able to apply in our lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. Faith. Faith. That I want you to think about your faith, actually. Uh, which of these two describe your life? Speculative faith or spiritual faith? And it is not about your faith that you know that God exists, but it is about your active faith that pleases God. And um, the first part of Timothy 1, chapter 1, speculative faith, false teachers, they use their faith to do the vain discussions and to show off their knowledge. And through their faith, they make a lot of money, actually. And they into meat, they into genealogy, and talking about uh, interest in uh, speculative things in their Christian life. Uh, genealogies. We talk about that. Where did uh, Cain get his wife from? Okay, lots of stuff like that in the Bible. Names in the Bible. Okay, people and the places in the Bible and the numbers in the Bible. Does it really matter for our salvation? Seven day creation, exact days, or more than seven days. Which is more important? How you love God and your brothers and sisters in Christ, or your view about the Bible? Does it really matter for your salvation? Arguing about, focusing on that, and talking about that, and discuss about that. Would you be more godly if you know where Cain get his wife from? Does it change actually your life? Ephesian church become more interested in speculative things in the Bible <clears throat> than the core of the gospel. What actually the Bible talks about? His love for us, how we love each other. Ephesian church lost love. Do you know what does that mean? They become like a dead sea. It is still the sea but no life in it. Speculative theology equals false teaching. The biblical doctrine, any doctrine, divorced from the life of God, that is a false teaching. You have all the knowledge, but your knowledge divorced from the love of God and the love of Jesus, that is false teaching. Did you know that? Your biblical knowledge without love if there is no love in it, still can be a powerful person, powerful church, but you know what? They are dying, dying church. And Timothy had this difficult task to turn back to God. And did you know that we have this difficult task in 21st century living in Sydney, in Molandili Shania? The leaders of the church are moving away from the gospel, teaching something else. The biblical doctrine, which was divorced from the love of God. They are so knowledgeable, so knowledgeable, 
but no intention to love God and love His people. And when you are digging into the speculative or biblical knowledge, do you know the best area of doing that? And make sure that you have everything right. Instead of focusing on love, that issues from the pure heart and the good conscience and sincere heart, instead of loving gospel, forget about who God is and leaves his love behind, assumes who God is. And if you do that, and you always return to the law. That is what Ephesian church is doing. When you try to win over other Christians to your point of view <coughs> and your doctrine, and you become a legalistic person, you can argue about that, you can debate about that, your point of view. Instead of grace-oriented relationship, we become law-focused relationship. And that happened in the time. So if you can see the timeline, the next, you can see that the church was about, the Ephesian church was planted about 52 AD. And 62 AD, you can see that book of Ephesians, amazing compliment from Paul about how great is the church and how perfect in this side of eternity is the church. And 95, what happened? And the, the Apostle John and said that you have you got everything right, but you don't have love. And then we will remove what? The, your church. And in the between 60 to 95, that's when uh, 1 Timothy was written. Bring back to love. So it take a generation. Didn't take a long. It took only 30 years. Less than 30 years. The problem starts less than 30 years. So it didn't take long to become like that. They're focusing on doctrines, something like Calvinism or Arminianism. Or you can talk about public school, Christian school, which one is better? Or creation. Whatever, whatever the topic that it is, Christians can have a very heated discussion. Then the point is, is it necessary actually? In showing of my biblical knowledge about the genealogy, I mean metaphorically speaking, and all of that you can think of, actually. The world, the world is going down here very fast. You can see that, you know that. We often busy with win over to my point of view against other Christians. In this case, in the in Ephesian church, it's about genealogy. My question is then, are we the gospel focused people? Love focused people? In here, in verse 3 of 1 Timothy, say, As I urged you, when I was going to Macedonia, remain in Ephesus, so that you may charge certain persons not to teach any different doctrine, nor to devote themselves to myth, endless genealogies, which promote the speculation rather than the stewardship, stewardship from God that is by faith. Ephesus is Sydney. Ephesus is a town. <coughs> and we are here, we exist here to convict the world that we need a Savior, the glorious gospel of Jesus. We have been entrusted with the gospel of the glory of the blessed God. And the faith is not about you know that God exists and you know the doctrine and you can win your doctrine, biblical knowledge. Faith is about our trust that God will guide and protect and lead and feed us so we can love back to God and love our brothers and sisters in Christ. And the gospel is for the lawbreakers. And who are the lawbreakers? This is Ephesus. Instead of reaching out to the gospel, convict themselves the need of the gospel, what do they do? They speculate the Bible. They focus on myth and the genealogies and arguing about how good is their knowledge about the Bible. Why they are doing that? Why? Because the church in Ephesus grew big. It's a big church. They become like a big dead sea. Big. So they don't have to go out to reach out to people. 
Instead, now they need to impress insiders. They don't have to worry about outsider people reaching out, the people with the gospel. They need to impress insiders, actually. When the church starts focusing on insiders, so-called churchgoers, impress churchgoers, and actually in here, the Paul is not talking about lukewarm Christians, no. They lost their function as a church. The church has everything, they got everything right, but they got one thing wrong. And church is going downhill. And I think I made this, I gave you this illustration. Um, when I was at the Bible College from 1998 to 2005, nearly 10 years, I, uh, I, I drove a truck for the social service in the Presbyterian Church. And the first day, I got the truck and I drove. And uh, at the time, I didn't have a good concept of a petrol. And I parked in a, because the petrol was low, so I parked, I went into the petrol station and I got the card. You can fill the petrol and you can use the, uh, the com I mean, the social service uh, card and um, I went in. And the truck is normally diesel, right? And uh, I saw the diesel sign, but I saw the letter sign. I knew that unleaded is for car. Then I split second, I thought, okay, it's good to put leaded in it. <laughs> so I filled it with a tank, leaded. Then uh, I didn't worry about it. But I come back to the college and sleeping in a school dormitory at that time, and I talk with someone who is a mechanic. Somehow I talk about that. And this guy told me, that, you gotta call your boss. <laughs> <laughs> gotta do something about it. Then I called my boss, um, his name is Stephen Travers, then uh, he actually lived in a Granbrook, you know, from the Sydney, if you go to Granbrook, what happened? You know, uphill, going up, and the truck didn't go up, <laughs> so he's stuck in the middle. <laughs> I made all the trouble and, um, and and he told me that, I, when I rang him, he already went through all these problems and the troubles and he said, uh, is that why, Joshua? <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, and I told him, okay, I'll pay all the costs and I'll quit my job. <laughs> then graciously he said, that's okay, that's okay, everybody does a mistake. Um, so he cleaned the tank and if it is a diesel, you have to clean it properly. You can just put the diesel uh, petrol in it. So he cleaned it and he done it and the car moved back again, moves smoothly. The fuel of the church, the fuel of the church is love. Do you agree? The fuel of the church, this church family, any church family, the fuel of church get keep going is love, nothing else. If we focus on the doctrine, if we focus on that and all the like a trivial biblical knowledge, we got wrong fuels. We're not going anywhere. If we did that, we need to clean the fuel tank. Then fill the tank with the love. And the efficient church, their mindset is wrong. Their message is wrong. Their mission field is wrong. And their doctrine is wrong because they don't have love. So how to clean their fuel tank so they can fill it with the right petrol? And that's the today's passage, the second part of um, 1 Timothy. We can see in here that from we can hear from Paul that powerful remedy for this situation. And he's sharing the powerful story with us. I'm looking forward to it. Let's look at verse 12. I thank him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithful, 
appointing me to his service. Though, okay, formerly, I was blasphemer, persecutor, an insolent opponent. But I received the mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed to, for me with the faith and the love that are in Christ Jesus. I'm sure that there is no vocabulary exemplifying, but I am creating one now. Paul is exemplifying himself like a picture in here. This is a picture language. And Paul is revealing and showing himself as the gospel example. And to do that, he say that, formerly I was a blasphemer, persecutor, insolent opponent. What he said is that I misunderstood the law. I thought that the law keeping is the way to please him. In his desperation to please him, he did the very thing that God hates. Can you see that in here? He was murdering Christians. He separates Christians' children from the parents and all that. And Paul is saying that that was my faith. I got eight doctrines from the Bible, but my faith was wrong. And Paul is saying that that is speculative faith. And Paul is saying in here, Timothy, listen to me, listen to me, look at me. I am the example of speculative faith. I am. We often pointing to others, other Christians. You have a speculative faith. You are the worst Christian ever that I've seen. We sometimes quick to judge that. They are the worst sinners. But Paul is saying in here, no, 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 no. I was the worst. You can think of the worst Christians ever in Ephesian churches. No, 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 no. You name all the bad people, bad Christians in here. And Paul is saying that. I am the worst. I am the worst. I thought that I was serving God and doing the will of God. I acted ignorantly. And you know what? That was me. False modesty. False piety. Paul is not talking about miserable, look on Christians, lazy Christians. No, no. Simple truth about himself. And we can see in the New Testament, after 20 or 30 years later of his conversion, people still scare of him because according to what he has done. And the Paul is in here that saying that I've done wrong. In verse 15, the saying is a trustworthy. The gospel is a trustworthy. The Bible is a trusting worthy. The deserving of full acceptance that the Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. How beautiful is that? He knows that. But courageously, courageously, he is able to say that I am an example of a speculative faith. Last few months, uh, with some reasons actually, that we didn't have a proper session meeting. I know, I think all because of me that there are various things happen. So, so we met like briefly, but we didn't have a, like full uh, session meetings. And each meeting of a session meeting, my highlight of the meeting is always when we're looking at the Bible, then we confess that to each other saying, we are broken people. We are broken men in this broken world. And God gave us this privilege that we know our perfect God. And our role is then not showing our opinions, not about my biblical knowledge, but our role is to direct and guide and lead and to feed our church family and protect our church family in the name of Jesus Christ that we direct them to Jesus. And this is a, such a great reminder who I am in this place. While I was in overseas in Korea, I was just blown up uh, 
uh, away by the generosity of our church family, the support in, in every uh, perspective that I received. And I talked to Cindy about this. To be honest with you, I do not deserve any of that. I do not. I'm not. But you have shown me that. I was humble, very humble, by the support and the love and care because simply I don't deserve any of the part that I received from you. So I have to say big thank you. It's more than thank you. I don't know how to express. It will come out um, when I process all that. I don't know why, but anyway, with the grace of God and the love of God, I like to say thank you and, and accept your love for us in Christ. I can explain that, the love. And 1 Timothy 1, 16 says, But I received the mercy for this reason. That is me. As the foremost, can you can see that? That is me, the foremost, the worst sinners. Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him to eternal life. To the King of Ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. We are, we are so often tend to believe that I am in control of my life and that my plan for the future will succeed. But the truth in the Bible reminds me that we are the mist that appears for a while and then vanishes. Our life is brief and quick and more fragile than we often realize. And look back, time of reflection, when I was in Korea, I realized that there had never been a time that I was in control of my life. But God always is. I believe that is not fake piety. But this is a simple truth for everyone in this room. We are arrogant and proud. That is us. Whether you agree with me or not, that is us. And Paul said that I was, I was the worst. And I have to say that this morning, so am I. <laughs> me too. God saved me. And look at me. And look at you. When the Holy Spirit convicts you and your sin, what would you do? Would you say, my sin is not as serious as Paul in the Bible? Or would you say, my sin is not as serious as Joshua? Or that person? When the law convicts us that we are sinners, please remember this. God is merciful to me. And God asked us that repent. And as we receive the mercy from Christ, they God will ask us, would you show your mercy to other people? Are you proud of your life and your achievement? Paul said that I'm the worst of sinners, nothing that I'm proud of. What is proud of? 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9 says, Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my what? Weakness. Weakness. So that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Nothing that we can be proud of, but weakness. I needed mercy. I obtained the mercy from Jesus. So you can. That's what Paul is saying in here. I needed mercy. And I obtained the mercy from Jesus. So you can. That is a trustworthy saying from the Word of God. Important.
please remember that. Trust the word is saying from the word of God, you can obtain the mercy from God. We never ever forget that truth. We hang on to that truth with all our cost. That is why we are here this morning, celebrating Lord's Supper and remind ourselves that what Christ has done. At the funeral place, my, um, three of my friends actually visited me and uh, all of them are not yet Christians. They are the friends before my Christian era. So they visited me. They are not Christians and all that. And the one, one of my friends, he was doing the business and, um, and he had to deal with uh, and the churches and, and he just, because I'm a minister and he just chest out everything. And he, he, he's talking to me that how bad are the Christians actually. And the dealings with the Christians are so pathetic and, and how he, much he's angry at them. Then I listened to the all, I listened to that conversation like 10, 20 or 30 minutes and I didn't defend myself. The simple truth is that all that what he said was the truth. Because the church is not different from other organizations. When the church loses the gospel, when the church loses the gospel, that is exactly what church looks like. We operate our church-like organizations. What happened to the church in Ephesus? We have a stewardship that makes sure that that will not happen in Tamil. You can say, not in my time. Let's work hard for that. Then my question is, how clear is the gospel in our church family? Are we doing the gospel stuff? Our ministry philosophy? How do we guard our church so we can be on track? What is entrusted to us is the glorious gospel of the blessed God. Not keeping to ourselves, but take it to others and passing it on. And I believe that's our homework to do it. I don't say it's easy. No, especially 21st century in Australia. We have everything and this task is difficult than ever in human history. As you know, um, the day we flew over in Korea, my father-in-law passed away. Okay, so three days funeral, and a week later, a week later, that we finished all the funeral process, and we visited a place where his ashes lay, and I have a one week left. I didn't meant to. I thought he will live one more week than funeral and all that. That's why it took uh, three weeks. And at the end, I have one week left. So what do I do with one week? So I remember a um, couple of years back. Do you remember? Next photo, please. Do you remember next? A um, couple of years back, that I did take a course called Justice from online. The the the, the first year subject from the Harvard University. I did that course. Then I went to the secondhand bookshop and I found the book according to the lecture. It's in Korean, and I can read Korean, of course. So, so it, it normally like, you know, uh, expensive, but when I look at it, it's less than $10, second-hand book. So I pick it up, and I did a self-intensive course for one week. Whole week, I read that book, uh, just this, and this photo is actually that um, I got the cheesecake, I got the latte, and I got the book, and I got the earbud. That is a celebration of finishing the book. <laughs> the moment that I want to take a photo, I finish the book. When I read a book, that he's not, um, Michael Sander is not a Christian, but what he says about the justice, the operating system that, according to the, all the, the political philosophy on or ethics and everything, that comes down to one area and I was blown away by that. Wow! 
That is something what we're doing in Wallandale Presbyterian Church. Can you believe that? If you don't believe that, I encourage you to read a book. It's about uh, 400 page books. It's not easy to read. But I was blown away by the fact that what is talking about the, the justice and the ethical system that humanity will pursue, that's what we're already doing. Um, the reason why I'm saying that is between first and the second Timothy, and I like to have some series of showing that what we're doing is actually what they already talking about. Does that make sense? If not, that's fine. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but that's something I'm looking forward to. It. I'm looking forward to it. But this morning, please remember two things. One, Verse 15, the saying is trustworthy and deserving of a full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I was the foremost. Don't forget what we are capable of against God to against each other. We need to be aware of that and we courageously saying that I'm capable of doing that. Father, please forgive us. But the trustworthy saying, it's beautiful that, but from the verse 16. But I received the mercy from this reason that is in me the, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as, a, as an example to those who were to believe in him for the eternal life. To the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, the honor and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So, please remember, we are sinners, but we have a great Savior. Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you for Paul, actually, this time, that he courageously saying that I am the example of speculative faith. But he needed your mercy, that he received the mercy. Lord, when the Holy Spirit convicts us that we are sinners, Lord, please, please help us not to put under the carpet, but we courageously come before you with all our sins and the skeletons in the cupboard and saying that, Jesus, I need your mercy. Jesus, I need your forgiveness. Please help us to confess to you. And if we've done something wrong to our brothers and sisters in Christ, that please help us to confess that to each other. And please help us to <coughs> be the people what we meant to be in here, that the people of you, that we continue to forgive and continue to love and continue to show mercy to each other. We know that we are not perfect. We know that what we are capable of, capable of, we know that we are selfish. And all our world is around my ego, the Bible, your word, teaches us that we are saved by your grace. So Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we uh, partake communion, uh, we're going to sing the communion hymn, the Behold the Lamb. So please stand.
reminder of the covenant relationship with God through Jesus, very special relationship that we have by faith. So on the behalf of the session of this congregation, the decision according to uh, the leadership team, I therefore invite those who love the Lord Jesus Christ and are members in good standing of this for another congregation to join this celebration of Lord's Supper. 
So let's hear the gracious word of Jesus. <clears throat> Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart. You will find rest for your souls. And 1 Corinthians chapter 11 says this, For I received from the Lord what I pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you to this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whoever eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in worthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. Let's pray. Almighty and everlasting God, it is indeed our duty and delight always everywhere to give you thanks and praise. In the beginning, you created heavens and the earth, and everything in them. You made us in your own image, and your tender mercies are all of your works. Mighty God, Heavenly King, we magnify and praise you. With all the company of heaven, we will worship and adore you evermore, praising your saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory to you, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Almighty and merciful God, as you love us, that you send us your Son Jesus. And whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Lord, please help us to love you and love our brothers and sisters in Christ the way that you love us. And Lord, thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit that convicts us, our heart, that we need our Savior. And we know that we have Jesus in our heart. So as we partake this Holy Communion, Please help us to live our life, the life that we meant to live, meant to do. Love you and love our brothers and sisters in Christ as ourselves. We pray in Jesus' name. I like to ask you to uh, uh, grab uh, bread and the grape juice uh, in the back. And so, yeah, they've been already standing. So thank you. And Tapiwa, you can start your so hello Tapia this line. So I believe all received the uh, bread and wine. <clears throat> okay. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took a bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Christ has died. 
Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Let us pray. <coughs> Dear Father, you have greatly loved us and mercifully redeemed us, and now you have fed us and strengthened us at your table. Give us the grace that in everything we may give ourselves, our wills, and our words as a continual thank offering to you. May we live in peace and fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ and rejoice together in your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand for the benediction and the singing the now on to you. May the grace of Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.